All right. So the th one of the things about inward awareness is that because it doesn't have as much content or so you think it can, for a lot of people, they don't want to go inward because it feels like scary or that they're going to encounter what they actually feel, which is funny. So just allow for a second. It's like, you know, I try to think of different descriptions and words and so I can become aware of, in a way my mind can appreciate the difference. As my mind, as my brain becomes more passive, which we've been talking about for years, for months, in relationship to asana, remember you're trying to, because Angar talks about the brain needing to be passive, right? And, and one of the reasons why that's the case is then so more makes it to the brain. So you got the body's given a ton of information to the brain. The brain narrows it down so you can have a mind. And part of the reason why in asana you're trying to make the brain feel more passive is so you start hearing more and more dimension and aspects of an asana. So I've heard different descriptions sometimes, and I usually practice them more in Shavasana, but like I remember one, uh, trying to learn how to soften your brain, right? Which it seems weird. Like obviously when we usually go through and I talk about soften your eyes around the temples of jaw, and I talk about it in terms of organs of perception, right? Because you're, we're wired, evolution has wired us to be more aware outwardly for our survival. So, so there are 10, a lot of the instructions are about trying to soften the way that your brain is taking in the world, right? So you can feel more what's happening on an interoceptive level, like inside your body. But there are also things that seem non like nonsensical instructions. Like here's one, and I think of this more than I'd like to admit. Um, can you soften, let the brain recede inside from the edges of the skull? You actually can. I don't know if it's actually physically happening, but you can literally change the feeling. And this actually is already happening in a good Shavasana, right? Where the brain starts to pull away from the edges slightly. And notice though, one of the things that I love about how in good instructions work is that when you do that, does anyone notice that your jaw has to soften or naturally yeah. soften in the inside of your mouth, all the yeah. other ways the instructions happen, right? So there was another one I heard that made me, this isn't so much about the brain, but like in Shavasana, I remember hearing James Murphy, a very senior anger teacher say, let your cheeks deflate. Mm -hmm. Okay, so like get hollower here, right? So between softening the feeling or sensation associated with the inside of your skull and deflating your cheeks, and then relax your belly to relax your throat. And all of a sudden we're approaching the same place from a whole bunch of different direction. And you start to see how these instructions all interconnect. And then the catch all phrase, is let go. So you have to let go to let in. And paradoxically, you have to let in to let go. So you're sitting there trying to feel more inward. And then from this place where things are getting more still, asana is going to start and layer 
over this energy. It needs your asana needs to bring with it what's too quickly referred to as surrender. There is a, metho a, a methodology here. So from this place of stillness, feel your feet on the floor. As soon as that happens, you start to slightly engage. Feel your sitting bones. So here comes asana. Get down through your sitting bones, lift up through your chest. Broaden. <clears throat> you know, the first levels of instructions I remember understanding was across my collarbones. And now I realize that that, that may be a better way of doing that is broaden between the shoulder blades on the back body. But as you get that horizontal, make sure you're staying down through the feet and up through the chest. More awareness now on the back side of the body. So try to balance between what's in front of you and what's behind you while being structured and strong with asana. Now, if you can, and it's relatively easy, like I'm not gonna do it because it would throw me off balance. Bring your hands into prayer. So now make sure you're aware of the midline. So when my hands go into prayer, often I try to see a line down this, the center of my nose all the way down my face and connect it to the pressure between my hands. And then each sitting bone and each foot. So there's an even deeper introspective fullness that emerges because I'm aware of the midline. Let go of your day, stay strong, stay structured and prepare your mind to do yoga. Be balanced in the room. Be solid in your base. Good. And then release. Take your sternum up towards your chin. Take your chin down and over your sternum knowing that this is one of the three important completions for your energy. It's a bandha. Three main bandhas. Good, and then raise your head up with closed eyes and open your eyes. So. You know, like, so that line that I've, I've, I've said to you from Richard Freeman, that don't you know that the serpent of yoga has a thousand heads, uh, you know, meaning there's, there's no one way to do anything. And, and I want to talk, so here's another instruction that is a softening instruction that or, or a weird way. And I'm, I'm saying there's a thousand heads because when I hear an instruction, and again, I try to share with you in this class to show you how I'm a student, to see if you wanna to try to be a student 
in different ways. So, so you hear a great line, like for example, let your cheek, cheeks and deflate or soften the brain away from the inside of the skull. Like if you would, before I started yoga, if you had told me that that was gonna be an instruction, I would have said, that's ridiculous, right? And so, but, but the idea is that, not that that's the only way, is it a fact of the matter that your brain can recede from the inside of your skull? I don't know but is something trying to be communicated through instruction, through the lineage. And it's worth, not that I think that that's a fact of the matter, that's so like Western. And it's like, wait, no, it changes something when I try to do that. And maybe that, whether my brain's actually receding from the inside of my skull, the sensation that occurs when I do that is something to try to live into to see what the yogis are trying to pass down. So one time, here's one that I think is really weird, not quite as weird as the brain from inside of the skull, but it, 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 it's more confusing. I remember heard William Prottengeier, who was an Angar teacher in the Twin Cities, say on inhalation, the brain or the mind, whatever you want to say, recedes on inhalation. and it expands on exhalation. Now, I don't know what kind of fact that instruction is. Can you live into it right now? Can you see what he was trying to communicate by saying the brain or the mind, let's say mind, recedes on inhalation? What on earth could he be trying to point to? And I kind of get it. Like somehow on inhalation, my outer awareness pulls back and gets more sensation from my body. So my outer awareness, and he's calling that, and that's not only one, that's only one way to say it. And he's calling that, the brain, the mind recedes on inhalation. And so it's like, wait, okay. And then what kind of surrender happens on exhalation? Like what kind of, right? And he's saying that there's an expansion and he might've only said the brain recedes on inhalation and I, then in order to see that started to pay attention to the the relief like the boundaries released on exhalation for my for my mind or my brain so i'm not sure if that second side is just me thinking or trying to experience it so again and what's interesting the reason why i'm pointing this out is that if the brain expands or releases on exhalation but my spine can also extend more easily into action on exhalation there's an interesting distinction there so sit up straight and tall get this sense remember so the receding of the brain might be similar not the same as the cheekbones deflating, the cheeks deflating, right? If I deflate my cheekbones, watch what happens, how that more readily does something when I inhale. And then there's a release on exhalation, but the ability on exhalation to hit down through the sitting bones and lift up through the chest, you can actually extend your spine into action while your mind is releasing on exhalation going from a receded position or sensation to a fuller one but the fuller sensation on exhalation is an emptiness as the spine extends so now i just gave you a whole bunch of words that you may or may not be able to follow I'm just trying to describe stuff. I'm trying to show you what it's like to be a student 
when you can hear, even though you don't understand, you hear an instruction that you think, oh my God, there might be something there, something that might be trying to be communicated. And then you practice to live into it. Don't ever think that's the only way it happens. That's one of the thousand heads, right? It's not the one head, it's one of the thousand. And that's how diverse yoga instruction is, right? And that's why I'll never get bored in yoga, ever, because of all the nuances. All right, so dang. So I want you to try to extend your spine today while receding on the, your brain on inhalation and letting it drop away from the inner edges of your skull as you ex exert into action, right? That's why I just went through all that because it will apply to asana. All right, sit up straight and tall. So now feel your sitting bones and extend from your inner groin to your inner knee down to your inner heel. And then as you hit down through your city bones and start getting space in your spine between the vertebrae. Now, a lot of, like I just did it and caught myself, I was over, over gripping my lumbar spine, right about T12, which turns out to be, by the way, those thousand heads come out of T12, according to the mythology, right? So I'm being more alert, spreading my shoulder blades, hitting them down, and as that happens, receiving a lift on the front side of my sternum. Now I'm gonna take this position. So I like this position because I'm actually grounding and balancing, grabbing the seat of my chair as I just went through this. Like I'm really trying to get this really solid, right? Because when I get it solid like this, right? I can lift my sternum and drop my chin and I can feel that banda. So the bond is in the background, right, right there. And so as you get this lift and this drop, think about your cheekbones receding, deflating. Let the brain be in the midline as it recedes on inhalation. And then lengthen your spine on exhalation. Doesn't matter if you're breathing through your mouth or not. So now I'm gonna release. Now I'm gonna start including my arms. So I'm gonna stretch. So right now I go off balance as soon as I do that, right? Okay, so that part of my, my asana disintegrated, right? Okay, but I have to live in the body I have, right? <clears throat> so now I'm gonna to try to get this all back, stretch my arms down straight, broaden across my palms, open my elbow pits right here right? Don't put, don't drive my elbow forward, right? Try to feel the skin. If I try to feel the skin here, and I've given this instruction before, let the elbow pit open like a blinking eye. When I actually try to broaden across my palms and let the skin on the elbow pit open softly, I'm more at a receded relationship in my brain. R-E-C-E-D-I-N-G, E-D, receded, right? But now I'm activating and stretching down. And as I start to work my arms, the tricep in towards the bone of the upper arm, lift under the collarbones, get down to the sitting bones. Now extend from the inner groin to the inner knee. Keep the mouth soft on the inside. Don't press your tongue against the roof of your mouth. Make this a full pose. Good, and then release. So now come forward. Again, you know, as on a Monday, I'm gonna want you to create space in your low back, right? Because that space is gonna help you all day and all week. So you're trying to figure out how to hit your sitting bones down, lift up through the sternum, broaden between the shoulder blades, right? Almost like you're doing upward facing dog. Don't, cry, don't strain that much. Keep that position, bring yourself back to upright, stretch your arms down. Ooh, I just went off balance right there. It fell into my hole, a rabbit hole, right? And I'm gonna try to like feel that 
different things aren't that different. Good, and then in release and come forward again. Try to keep, try to realize what's happening here. This type of alertness. The thing is when I'm leaning forward, I have a collapsed space between the top of my legs and my lower abdomen. So I'm jumping right over that space, right? And so when I, when I'm, and I'm gonna engage, lift the sternum and my city bones down, broaden across the sacrum this time, feel where my legs are, almost make it like upward facing dog, but don't know that the pose is right in the neighborhood, right? But you're not going there, right? And now keep this and back up and try to have these two, the feeling of when it's for, but now I want you to feel more space and make distance between the top of your thigh and your, and your torso, right? And as you make space there, hit down through your sitting bones, down through your feet and lift up. This space at the top of your thighs when you sit a lot, it's really important. If you don't have clear distinction between your legs and your torso, it depletes your energy. And so throughout my day, I'm gonna to try to feel it like four or five times because I can't do it when I'm doing my normal life. And then release and then go back up and over the back of your chair. And, but this time I want you to push down on your thighs, right? And as you push down on your thighs and lift up, I want you to pay more attention to the space between the top of your thighs and your torso, right? So, you're, so before I'm tipping back, I'm already pushing in a way where I'm really trying to make space in my lower abdomen and then go back and over. So I, for me, because I can't feel my legs like a lot of you, it's really important for me to stay grounded through my legs, that's why I'm pushing on them, in order to find the space between the top of the thighs and my torso. And when I stay away, aware of that space, maybe it's similar way deep in there to having my cheekbones deflate and my brain recede from the sides of my skull. Good, and then release, come forward, come forward again. Remember, Shavasana is in every pose, right? Shavasana tunes the mind unless you let it bring you to sleep. Shavasana is a tuning of introception. So now I'm forward and making, <clears throat> and making length. Never thought of it that way. I kind of like that. Shavasana is like a tuning fork for more, more fuller dimension, right? So I'm lengthening my back here. Good. And now I'm going to take some time to make a distinction. I'm more far, far, farther forward now. But now I, can I separate my spine from my legs? And if I do, do I immediately feel more through my feet? Probably. Yeah, that's probably happening. Good, and then release and come on back. Take your left arm up. So as soon as you go up, remember last week, I think I talked about being the weaving between the earth and the sky. So whatever you remember from last week, do it right now. Bring the sky down to your fingertips as you bring the earth up towards the sky. Like be the weaving, right? Be the connection and then back down. And then the other side, again, wow, I, I can actually be the weaving between a more expansive energy and a more grounded energy. Huh. Good. And then release. So just a weird description here for a second. Okay. So as you soften the inside of your mouth, Typically, I usually feel that as like a dropping towards the earth, right? Like a whew, because I'm letting go, right? What if that's also the way you get to the sky, right? That that feeling of drop and landing is also part of the expansive energy and the open energy that's above, right? So here's a story as to why I think about things like that. When Bikas Angar was here in 1987, and if, I don't know if anyone remembers the harmonic convergence, does anyone old enough to remember? It's a big thing, all the stars were gonna align and world peace was gonna start, right? And, and, and um, 
he was here during that time and he was hearing you know, kind of a new age big deal about it. In the morning of harmonic convergence, he turned to one of his senior teachers and said, and said, okay, so, so did you feel anything in your pranayama this morning? Right? And, and this teacher said, no, no. And he goes, I didn't either. I'm not sure this is real. From that story, I've always thought about Shavasana not only landing me on the earth, but bringing me outward, sky and beyond, right? Because clearly he thought he would be able to feel a change in the flow in his quiet pranayama to something that's very outside and away from the earth, right? I have no idea if that's true, right? But I'm trying to learn from the story. All right, so again, go up, hit down through your sitting bones, down through your feet, drop the shoulder blade down and reach without reaching physically, extend from your sitting bones towards the sky and then know the sky misses the earth. So bring the sky down and keep solid in your base. Good, and then release. Other arm up. When I exhale, remember that's an expansion on some level. Can I extend on the exhalation? And as I lengthen upward on exhalation, can I bring the sky down to my fingertips? Can I connect it to the earth? What does these instructions even mean? energy good and then release they mean energy right <clears throat> there's more here right stretch down through through your arms again now this time very simple instruction not so simple lift under the collarbones as your arms are stretching down exhale and lengthen Exhale and let the brain recede from the inner edges of the skull as you exert your spine up and down. Good. And then lift up. Remember, I want there to be that lightness in the base of your spine. And then I'm going to set myself back down and let everything crunch, right? But now when I lift up, I want you to be from the, when you lift up, I want you to really let traction hang down at your tailbone, but then use that to be more aware of the difference between your legs and your torso, right? So lift up. Try to let that hanging energy reveal. And then try to keep it, keep your spine long as you set yourself back down into gravity. Right, and then lift up as you hit down. The only way you're gonna keep this length is if you hit down with your feet and legs, right? You're gonna have to have it. Otherwise that's gonna happen, right? Like you can just see my body. <laughs> so I'm trying to keep that length. And then from there, I'm inhaling, take my arm. Right away, I go off balance and I drop. I, part of me just compressed. That's okay. Your poses are never going to be perfect. Good. And then release. Take the other arm up. Mm -hmm. Trying to keep length in my spine. Awareness down through my legs. Right? We're setting up the energy that makes standing poses matter. Right? And also a whole bunch of other stuff. Good. And then release. So now take, take your foot. Try to get this length. Find that length again. So they're just going back to that collapse space. Inhale, take your right arm up and then drop it down your back here. So now we're heading towards headstand, right? So I'm gonna roll in my tricep here, kick my shoulder blade down, stretch up beyond my elbow tip, right? And I'm now, my relationship, instead of going beyond my fingertips, how do I go beyond my elbow tip to touch the sky? What do I have to do to my sitting bones? For me, I got to work my base even more. Good, and then release. 
And then inhale, take the other arm up. Get this expanded energy that's kind of cheap. You get to have it easy. Try to keep it as you drop your arm down, right? And roll in. So now you're in less space, but the expansive energy is supposed to stay with you, right? So then I have to refine it. Good, and then release. <clears throat> so I gotta be careful here. I tweaked my shoulder yesterday, freaking pissed me off, right? Dumb little thing, I fell awkwardly, lost my bounce. You're gonna take your right arm behind, left arm behind you. So I gotta be really careful here because it is ginger. It is like, ooh, right? So I'm gonna try to open right here. So I'm gonna take some time to get this space more open, right? Which Gita Angar calls fear complex right here. Okay, so by the way, have you noticed how incredibly afraid our culture is of everything? So we're believing in like theories, conspiracy, right? We have an inordinate amount of fear right now, right? So I'm opening here. Trying to think, huh, what about open energy there would make me less fearful? I have no freaking idea that I'm gonna, I've been trying to live into that for about 25 years. Why shoulder stand would help with fear? Hmm, dang, what is it? So when I'm looking for an energy, keep your arm there. As you're lifting here, look for the energy right outside your body, right? So as you're in this spot, rolling your shoulder back, lifting up here, right? What changes in relationship to the space around you? And then on exhalation, I'm gonna extend my spine. Good, and then release. Stretch my arm back. Take the other hand behind me. Ooh, holy guacamole. God, this must be Monday. Holy crap, right? So I'm just like, I'm trying to, again, I'm trying to live into, not just that I'm taking my arm behind my back, but live into wisdom that's been passed to me in words and to see if I have the strength to explore. Are you an explorer? I am. I'm going to explore. So I'm trying to keep that open. This is just not happy. I don't know what I must have done this weekend. Holy crimes. Good. And then release. And then take the arm back up. And then take it down. Mm -hmm. And then down. Then up. Remember, everything's happening, right? Everything we've been talking about. Don't just take your arm up, right? And then down, move it in. I'm gonna take that down. I'm gonna go behind me again. I'm gonna visit, I'm gonna open fast. Try to feel what the relationship is between here and the empty space around me. Cause maybe there's some insight there that I need for my life. Kind of makes sense, right? When I'm like this, the center of my chest is more in the world. This is more in the world when I'm open here. Huh, maybe we're all protecting our hearts. Other arm up, and then back around behind you. And open. So now this opening we're creating in the upper body has to make it to my legs. Remember, we're trying to distinguish and then release the legs from the, from the um, lower abdomen. So I'm gonna come forward again, but this time if we can come onto a table, I'm gonna come onto my elbows, which wouldn't be that different than this, right? And I'm gonna to try to engage, open, lift under my collarbones. You can do it on your thighs too. <clears throat> now, when I'm like this, that shoulder stand energy or the energy right up my side arm to chest, it's harder. I'm more in a straight line, okay. But then I'm just going to then go there with Shavasana and soften around the edges like I did on the inside of my brain or on my skull. I'm going to soften. 
and try to receive at the side armpit chest. Getting down through my sitting bones, lifting up through my sternum, keeping my lips together, my teeth slightly apart, connecting my hands together, creating more effort, more muscular action. Good. Study right now. Take a picture, let it imprint you. Good, and then come on back up. <clears throat> so now this, I'm gonna lean over again. Now I'm gonna lean over to my right and I'm gonna push down on my, on my right, my left hip, and I'm gonna get this space between my abdomen and my legs, my legs going down. I'm lifting up, right? And then I'm gonna release. I'm gonna do it the other way because now this side is more closed. All right. So I'm gonna go the other way. I'm gonna get alive more on a Monday. I'm gonna separate different parts of my body and breathe. I'm gonna do all this while having my brain receive from the inside of my skull, while lifting my chest. Good, and then release. Because right? you're looking for whole body awareness, right? So now I hope you're feeling like you're sitting up taller, right? I don't know, maybe you're not. Maybe you didn't do any of this, right? So I'm gonna go, huh, I like this feeling of feeling taller and more upright. I'm gonna use again this space, I'm gonna lean over again, and I'm gonna get this really more active. And then I'm gonna let go of my thigh, ground down through the bottoms of each of my feet, take my arm up. Notice as soon as my arm went up, I collapsed. All right, so I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna like find it. Can I maintain that? Okay, so for me, as I'm leaning over to the right, pushing on my left hip, as soon as my arm goes up, I'm gonna collapse the empty space. So I'm gonna assert my right sitting bone more, my right foot more down as I take my arm up. So I'm, I'm trying to create and maintain space. Now I'm trying to feel here. Had a whole class on this, maybe even last week or two weeks ago about this right here, keeping this open right here. Good, and then release. Keep in a more exerted upright position where I'm differentiating my legs from my very low back. Gonna let that breathe a couple of times. Notice how I feel different from side to side now. Notice that I'm longing to go the other direction. Right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna lean over, I'm gonna hit down on my thigh, and I'm gonna lengthen my spine away from it. Hitting down through sitting bones in my feet as I'm making this space happen. Then I'm gonna watch what collapses in my arm goes up. Damn it. Some of that's gonna be unavoidable. Right. I'm going to come back, keep it, figure out what I have to do to support this, which for me is my right, left sitting bone, left foot. Try to keep that length as my arm goes up. I hope you're breathing better into your pelvis now. Good, and then release. Come back to center. <clears throat> now I want my legs to be more differentiated in some of these movements. So <clears throat> take your legs off. The, I'm taking my legs off my foot pedals. <clears throat> Gonna spread my legs. Some, this is just as much to remind me to have variation in poses, right? <clears throat> So I'm just gonna sit here for a second. Holy crimes, one of my grinds is way tighter than the other. <clears throat> Here's me in my hole, that's my rabbit hole of scoliosis. Here's me un-derotating. <clears throat> I need to have more support in order for me to derotate, right? 
because that's how gravity's moving with my body. I got to hit against the inside of my leg. I have to exert in order to be more in the center. Now I'm just going to let this mark me. Taking a couple of breaths, <clears throat> sitting more upright. And then I'm going to lean over now a little bit and put more weight on my left leg, opening my chest and just getting more open. Notice how grounded I'm being. I'm actually making sure that I'm trying to feel secure as I'm opening like this. Then keeping that, I'm going to take my arm up. So I'm really trying to get, right? The separation between my legs and my abdomen. Good, and then release. Now, come back to the middle. <clears throat> I can already tell it's gonna be way different going the other direction. So I'm gonna readjust knowing that I need to get my sitting bone separated from my abdomen, right? Because I've been telling you for months now, the separation in your lower abdomen is crucial if you sit a lot. So now I'm gonna lean over this way, try to get more grounded and the separation. I'm keeping myself very secure. I really want the earth with me here, right? As I'm making space, that sky. Remember when you make space, think of it as getting sky down into the empty spaces of your body, right? So I'm really trying to get that. The spaciousness and the grounding because they were already happening. Then here it goes, my arm goes up and damn, I lose some stuff, gain some stuff, I lose the earth. So I'm gonna take my arm back down. I'm gonna find the earth again. I'm gonna to try to keep it in the spaces in my low back, right? Keep the length, lift the sternum and then take my arm up. So I'm actually using my memory to keep the space, to keep the length. Good, and then release. <clears throat> Bring your legs back in together. One of the things that, it sounds, what I'm about to say, it sounds pejorative, but it kind of is, and it's kind of not. <clears throat> when it comes to actually um, being in my whole body, my mind is lazy, right? It'll try not to have to pay as much attention because I'm, the mind is judging that the external stuff's more important, right? For my, for your survival, like let's do how our brains are there. I was like, huh, okay. Can I resist the tendency of my mind to follow the actions in the yoga pose? So the Bhagavad Gita will talk about the yoga of action brings the mind away from the divine, whatever they mean by that. Because the mind gets lazy about staying connected because it's following the drama. All right, so I'm gonna take my legs wide again. Open it up again. And so what's interesting is Usually you confront laziness with your will, right? But what if the spaces between your legs and in your low abdomen, at the very, at their very genesis, has to do with letting the brain recede from the inner edges of your skull? And then once I, so I'm sitting here like doing all the stuff we did in the beginning. Right now. As I'm sitting here, trying to actually find that space. Because what I want is to stay connected to the empty space. And, and then exert my will in a way that doesn't collapse the empty space. So I'm paying, I'm letting my pose and the sensations in it imprint me. Now, as soon as I start moving, it's gonna get confusing. 
right? So now I'm gonna go over this way again and open it up, right? And try to make sure this length is staying. Because once this drops, right, I lose the freedom of the space, right? So before we took the arm up, right? We're not gonna do that this time. We're gonna take the arm behind us. We're gonna make this more of a focal part of the pose, right? So now I'm lifting up, getting down through my sitting bones, making space in this part of my spine, right? Opening up. Finding my feet on the floor. Good. And then release. I said finding rather than pushing. One would be will, one would be more empty than that. Come the other way. Right? Take the arm behind you. So, oh, we're going to do the other side again. I don't instruct too much on this side. Good, and then release. Bring your legs together for a second. I want to find my midline. So I'm going to take gravity coming forward. I'm going to push out my femur bones. And I'm going to take allow there to be relief on the on the base of my spine and on the inner edges of my legs right i'm gonna because i'm gonna want the midline in my pose in a second so i just break things down and nourish because parts of the poses when they have more action in them it pulls me away from quote whatever they mean by the divine Right? The yoga of action causes attachment because right? the mind gets attached to what's outside. So take your legs wide again. Why do people get attached to things in their life? Like we're all attached to money, we're all attached to things, right? It's because the empty space, as the mind disassociates from the body, finds the object, there's all that empty space between you and the object that then fuels the attachment, right? So you, an agitated mind is going to be a more attached mind because it's using the empty space as fuel for the attachment. All this stuff is going on in yoga, but it's not leaning over again. Mm -hmm. I'll take the arm behind me. And I'm really opening, lifting, hitting down to my sitting bones. Now I really want to breathe right into my rib cage. Know where my legs are. Feel the feet on the floor. Now this has to stay open as the arm goes right up over the head. This has to stay open. Don't do this, but see that's there. This is here. Keep it open. Now drop down. Can you see where headstand is? My elbows, my my arms went down my back. Right? right? Then I'm gonna straighten it again. Good, and then come on up. So if shoulder stand and head stand are the queen of all and king of all asana, means there are probably elements of them in every pose. Let's go over this way again. Take my arm behind me. Find shoulder stand. Find the in intensity and openness, but now keeping the space. Right. 
always the challenge while sitting, keeping space in your body. Right, so now I'm gonna take the arm straight over, bring it down, visage, headstand. Keep the shoulders down, take the arm back and revolve. Notice how wide your legs are. Feel expansive. Good, and then release. Take your legs back together. Again, now I've got, you know, like the, this should be how you practice too, if you know you're gonna. So I've done some kind of expansive. Notice I was purposely not barking at you in that last pose. Didn't want you to use just your will, right? But now I got to land as I prepare for Shavasana. So I'm gonna like, just to remind myself, I can put my hands on my knees, articulate my femur bone back into my hip socket. Notice the natural lift right here. Inhale, letting the brain recede. Exhaling into the fullness coming through the center of my chest. The center of my test, chest touches everything. It's very wise. Good, and then release. Take your right hand outside your, or your left hand outside your right leg. So you're just gonna gently activate your spine into a twist. Lift under the collarbones, find shoulder stand in the side armpit chest. Keep the length in your spine. Inhale, lift up, exhale, revolve. Good, and then come on back to the center. Other way. Mm -hmm. Trying to remember everything, including like what your brain is doing, what your jaw is doing. And then come on back in the center. Now I'm gonna practice some symmetry again. So as soon as I do that, um, do you know how to relax the peripheral vision? Like, it's kind of what you do when you look at an art painting and you blurry, let your eyes kind of go blurry. So I want you to relax your gaze and sit alert without strain. Feel the symmetry from side to side. The Shavasana is going to give more support, but you want to be full. You want to be full so your emptiness can be nourished in Shavasana. Good, and then release it. Prepare for Shavasana, which means I'm going to lean back a little bit. And again, I want to make sure I'm surrendering the weight to my chair. I can, again, I try to keep some level of sensitivity as part of my shavasana, so my fingertips, my thumb tips, everything. I'm gonna really let my cheekbones, my cheeks deflate, really let there be a receding on the inside of my skull, but let that receding be held up by your chair. Surrender your weight, not just your physical weight, but your mind's management of that weight. Let it dissolve. And we're on the temples of the jaw, almost like a cave. But then see how that what that does to the brain on the inside of your skull. 
in Shavasana, there isn't a lot of breath awareness. Let it go. Feel your breath. Thank your body. Thank it again. Start to bring yourself back slightly deeper inhalation. Slightly longer exhalation. When you're ready, open your eyes. And then if it's too bright, close them. Good morning. And then open them again. So, so do you know, like, here's a sensation to try to get your brain more tuned into. Um, do you know this sensation of nourishment in your empty spaces? Right? Which can be confused with fatigue. Right? But it's like, right now with what you did, and hopefully you worked a little bit so you can feel kind of that little bit of fatigue, but Shavasana is trying to ground and keep spacious, right? That sense of emptiness without it just collapsing, <coughs> collapsing into fatigue, right? So um, just feel that. All right, so I hope you have a good week.